Hello and welcome to GuardCast, a podcast that offers insight to soldiers and civilians from subject matter experts across the board. I'm your host, Sergeant Joseph Goldsmith, and thank you for tuning in. Well, thank you for joining us today, everyone. I have Sergeant Josiah Kidman. He is the recruiter for Alpha Company of the 3rd Battalion of the South Carolina State Guard. And we are at the Myrtle Beach Gun Show uh, at a uh, recruiting booth. And uh, I thought it would be great today to have uh, Sergeant Kidman talk about what it's like to be a recruiter in the South Carolina State Guard. So nice to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so as a recruiter, it's my job um, not only to sign paperwork, talk to new people. Um, it's also my job to make sure that the recruits coming in from the time they're ready to sign papers to the time of their first drill to make sure they have an easy, um, um, an easy flow going to, uh, their first drill. Cause <coughs> we don't have a MEPS. There's no, there's no formal, you know, Hey, you know, you need to get a physical blah, 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 blah. The only thing that happens is other than me vetting, the new recruits is they get a medical inquiry they got to go through background checks and all those smaller stuff but in terms of physical fitness in terms of agility mental capability that's all left up to me to make sure that they get in properly and they're going to work right 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 excellent uh do you find that people are a little leery at first when they're they might be interested about the state guard and enlisting but maybe not too sure all the time. You know. All the time. Um, it's, it's not uncommon for people to have 200 million questions and for me to be on the phone. I, I average it, um, my first contact with a recruit, anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half on the phone. Um, and I always tell my wife that. I'm like, all right, babe, new recruit. I'm going to be on the phone for a, for a little while here. Because um, there, there's differences, but the differences between us and the National Guard are subtle. So <clears throat> it's important that I explain to people what those subtle differences are so they understand what they're signing up for. Right, right, fair enough. Um, so d- do you find that when you are, when, when somebody comes over to a recruiting booth and they're expressing interest, have you found in your experience that they are primarily non-priors or prior military? Um, I get a lot of non-priors, um, but the non-prior guys who walk up, who ask questions, typically get shy away because they're they're concerned about the smaller details and they're uneasy about well this is the military but it isn't so what does that mean and in the moment they didn't come here to look for a place to serve they came to look at guns and this was just a nice little detour for them although i do get a couple every once in a while it's not likely most of the guys i get um uh have a have a dd2 and they walk up i tell them the differences they ask me questions and they're they're ready to go you know um and they're very happy they're very excited to do it um, but it's it's a lot easier with guys with DD two fourteens. Do you find that type of concept happens at, at other e, uh, events, other recruiting events? I would imagine so, um, <coughs> because it's you know people are people, and whether it's people who have gotten out, whether they live in Dillon County, whether they live in Greenville, whether they live um, near Paris Island, or whether they live in Charleston. Um, you know, all those places, everybody's just about the same in terms of where they look at for service and what they want to do after their military career or if they've never had one. Right. In your experience, because you, you are, when you were in high school, you were ROTC, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, did you know about the State Guard when you were in ROTC? No, I never had a clue. Um, and if I did, I would have taken a much closer look at it. Um, I would have always known, okay, this is a place I can go, and this is my fallback to serve if I'm not allowed to serve. All right, so Sergeant Kidman, uh, tell me about the process of enlistment. First part of the process to get you started in recruiting is you have to go to me. You have to say, hey, I want to enlist. Um, or you can go to our website, and you can sign up and you know fill out the application form, and you can fill out the medical inquiry, send that in. And once you send that in, I'm going to get an email from my NCOIC up at battalion, 
and she's going to email me your information. I make contact with you. I make sure you're a squared away person, that this is something you really want to do. I clarify anything that you're not clear on. Um, and if you go through me specifically before you do the paperwork, I'm going to have to unfortunately just tell you, hey, you got to go to the website. You got to f- sign everything in. Here's the answers to your questions. If you need me, just give me a call. But the process ultimately is the same because, you know, after your paperwork's done, your paperwork sent in, um, you're going to get an email a couple months later saying, hey, congratulations. Welcome to Francis Mayer and Reception Company. These are your dates to go. Uh, you, if you're prior service, you have a DD-214, you go one weekend, and you're done. You take some anti-terrorism courses, you get your uniforms, you're all set. Um, if you are not prior service, you don't have a DD-214, then what happens is you go one weekend a month for two months, and you learn basic drill, you learn basic everything. Um, now, this is not basic training for the South Carolina State Guard. This is just an entry to give you some direction to go so you know what you're doing before you even show up to your first drill. Basic training comes at your convenience um, at the military academy. Okay, so let's say that I was an officer. I'm prior military and Mm -hmm. I'm an officer. Or um, I'm a doctor or a lawyer or uh, an engineer, you know, in the civilian world, but I'm interested in the state guard. what types of opportunities would I have? Like, would I come in as a private? Uh, would I come in as an officer because of maybe I have one or two or three degrees and a very specialized skill sets that the guard could utilize? How, how does that process work? Well, um, it is a process. <laughs> um, there's a lot to it. Um, So first starting out, the first thing we have to vindicate is whether you have a DD-214 or not. If you have a DD-214 and you have a degree, and there's an officer slot available in your field, then we can immediately put you in that slot. Um, we can, you know, give you an officer rank. It's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you are a um, non-prior service, if you don't have a DD-214, then what you have to do is you have to go ahead and, um, and you have a degree, excuse me, and you have a degree. What you have to do is you come in as something as an E4 or E5, um, you spend a year as an E4 and E5, and the purpose of that is so then you understand what military life looks like as a leader. It's kind of like similar to what people go through to go to OCS um, without having to go to OCS. So you spend a year as a sergeant or a corporal for a year doing your field, um, whether it's in engineering, whether it's the JAG Corps, whether you're um, a chaplain. And after a year, we can appoint you to the rank of Lieutenant O1. And then you can take your position there. Um, so it is a little bit of a process. It is some towards you know you gotta you know you gotta jump through some hoops, um, but the hoops are there to make sure that you are ready for um, um, officer life because officer life is clearly going to be different than enlisted life. And so you have some perception on what that looks like. We give you some enlisted life. And I can actually speak on that. I'm actually going through that process myself right now. So. I, because I am non-prior, um, I had some medical issues with uh, my knee and I was not able to enlist. Um, this was my opportunity. So I have degrees under my belt, a lot of life experience, but they still wanted me to come in enlisted so I can experience that life. Just like Sergeant Kidman was saying, experience the enlisted life, learn the ropes, which I have done. And I am in the process of uh, getting all of my getting my packet put together, all my paperwork, <coughs> so that way I can then be appointed to lieutenant and become the OIC instead of the NCOIC uh, for public affairs within the third battalion. Um, and I can speak that it is definitely some hurdles uh, that that you have to jump through, and that's okay though because without those hurdles, you wouldn't know. You know, if you just walk into, um, you know, if you just walk into a grade. And, and you have nothing prior before that, and then how, how do you really understand? And, I, and also I found out, uh, and I do, wanna, I do think it's important to share, so let's pretend that you are a doctor. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and you've been a doctor for 20 years, and you're, you're incredible at it. Well, obviously we could use you in the medical corps. Yep. So we could potentially bring you in as a captain, yeah. okay, uh, just based off of your experience, your degrees, et cetera. Well, in order for you as a captain to be promoted to major you have to go back and you have to do 
officer basic course. And yep. then you have to do um, trip C, uh, captain's career course. Mm -hmm. And you have to complete all of those prerequisites that you kind of got to skip yep. at first if you want to get promoted to the next rank. That's right. Which, honestly, I think that's a good thing. I think that's how it should be um, because, again, it gives you insight. And it's not like a get-out-of-jail-free card. I came in, you know, at this rank you know, but I want to move up. You don't get to skip everything. You still have to go backwards. So if you come in and you are enlisted, you do have the opportunity to become a Mustang. <laughs> um, but you still have to follow policy and protocol as you would in any other branch. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. All right. So Sergeant Kidman, can you discuss with our listeners, what are the basic criteria to enlist in the South Carolina State Guard? In order to enlist as a soldier, first thing you have to do is you have to be physically able to become a soldier. You have to be able to walk, talk, perfectly fine, no issues, no concerns. Um, you have to have your high school diploma, um, a good solid background check, um, and really, as long as you are mentally competent, um, you're physically able, and you have your high school diploma, and you have a clean background, you're set. You just let me handle everything else. I get smaller stuff for paperwork from you, and, and everything's all taken care of. You can enlist, right. um, out, and we can definitely talk about rank if you have more um, experience as a maybe you're a truck driver. Um, we're soon going to be getting some vehicles, um, so I might promote you to uh, PFC or PV2, but just for, just for the sake of you being able to do that. Um, or if there's another need within the, uh, the company, um, I can promote you based off of what you are. I, I'm actually bringing in a guy right now, um, and he was a police officer for 25 years in New Jersey. And based off of his experience, um, I told him, and, and I am, I'm bringing him in as an E5 because of his life experience. You know, um, there's no reason to bring him in as a private. He's done his time. He knows and understands basic professionalism, customs, and courtesies and he knows what he's doing. He has that life experience of what to do in a natural disaster. He's been a police officer, you know, if, you know um, so there's, there's no reason for him to come in as a private. When he has that life experience and that leadership of 20, 25 years in a police department, that he can take that and he can utilize that with us and not have to start out as a private. Exactly, and I think that's such a huge asset uh, that state guards and state defense forces have that's right. a, a, in, in my knowledge that they they take you for where you are in life that's right you know and and they allow you to bring that in without i don't want to say penalizing you and say oh well it doesn't matter you have to start from the beginning um with utilizing your skill set exactly though. exactly I, I i think that's a, a really honorable thing to do you yeah. know like like the you know the individual that you're working with the recruit yeah. that you're working with right now um or and myself like when i came in i came in as an e5 mm -hmm. you know because of my business and my intense background however i'm not quite officer material yet right I'm not, i i'm not able to take official command yep you know so it's it's giving me that year or two of yep. enlisted life, which frankly, I'm loving it. I, I absolutely love being enlisted. And I, you know, I would stay enlisted if it meant that I was able to do more, but in order to make those types of decisions, you know, and if any of you are, are prior, then you know that, that officers are, you know, they're the paper pushers and, and I understand that. So I'm taking that leap. I'm going over to the dark side, you know, as, <laughs> as people are already ragging on me about, um, you know, but but it's the fact that the state guard and our battalion at large said, "Look, we we want to put you here. That's right. That is our goal for you. That's right. But you need X, Y, and Z first. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take you halfway there, and then it's kind of up to you how quickly you want to go there. Yeah. So if you're out there listening, and and it doesn't matter if you're in South Carolina or Maryland or New York or wherever there's a state guard or state defense force, don't let something like that dissuade you um you know say oh well i'm i'm in my late 30s this uh, it's too late for me i never had my shot yeah yeah, yeah yes you do yep. you know yep. oh well i'm i'm a neurosurgeon i just don't have time well you actually might um a lot of state guards have uh, like their own reserves like yep. we have our reserves the mm -hmm. ready reserves the ready reserve yep. program yep. and a lot of our engineers and doctors mm -hmm. like that's where they go 
you know, because they're so busy, they, they are always on call 24 seven or whatever the case might be. And they only show up when it's a true emergency. Right. And, um, I'll, I'll fill you in a little bit on the ready reserve program. Um, so the way this works is if you finding yourself that you want to serve, um, but you just don't have the weekends to give up because, you know, here in South Carolina state guard, uh, we operate slightly different from the national guard with our, uh, drill. Uh, schedule. So we do one weekend a month per month, but um, it's more uh, well here in third battalion, at least um, we just do Saturday, you know, it's from um, eight in the morning to about two or three in the afternoon, most, uh, most weekends. And some people don't have that. Don't, they don't even have a weekend to themselves. <clears throat> and so for that point, uh, we created the ready reserve program because we don't want them to be, well, if I can't serve, if I can't do it, then I'm not going to do it. We have the ready reserve, so then that way, soldiers who don't have that time, they just do one drill a year. And that's all they're required to do is one drill a year in the ready reserve program and then deploy whenever they're able. We get a, we do. We get a lot of doctors. We get a lot of um, engineers. We get a lot of um, 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 pastors who want to jo- want to join the chaplain corps. That's what they do. Um, so it's not impossible. Now, a lot of times, though, that being said, um, a lot of the guys in ready reserves, they do not wear um, OCPs. They don't wear combat uniforms. That's correct. They don't wear service uniforms. They will show up in khakis and a polo mm-hmm. with South Carolina State Guard mm-hmm. uh, embroidered on the left chest. And that's to delineate that they are in the reserves yes. and they are not what we call active. I mean, because we, we are, as far as the State Guard goes, we are active service members. Yes. You know, we are on call. 24 7 yes um to kind of piggyback off of that for a second the nice part is is that you can go as far as you want Mm -hmm. you can work as hard as you want so you know i'm a business owner during the day and if i have nothing going on for a week or a few days i can pump that much more into you know what i do you know as a public affairs officer yep but if i'm really busy then public affairs has to go on hold until my business slows down a little bit. That's right. You know, so again, it's just there's there's always that opportunity that <coughs> um, you can come in, but but that's where the whole the the active versus reserves come Polo. in. Ready reserve also do have the opportunity, and they are allowed to wear the OCP uniform. Yes. But the only catch is they'd have to show up, at, you know, shave. Yes, your dress. grooming standards. Right. right. But um, if you don't want to shave, you just want to be ready reserve. You can right. show up with a big old mustache and beard. Um, and you'd be perfectly fine. Right. Yep. So, and that, that's the big thing is that alternate uniform, you know, it says you'll still have your, your combat boots and like I said, your, your, your khakis and, and your black polo. Um, so, but anyway, we, we, we could go down that road for a while, but yeah, long story short, there are limitless options, yes. you know, within state guards and state defense forces. Absolutely. And, and if you are listening to this and you are not in highly encourage you to do it um you might not even know where a recruiting station is because we don't have like specific offices where we have you know recruiters that hang out all day um you're gonna see us at events you know but just google your state Mm -hmm. you know state defense force or your state state guard you know Mm -hmm. and and a website will pop up, or at least a Facebook page. Something's yep. going to pop up with it. Call that number and yep. just roll with it. Now, in South Carolina, um, you know, Sergeant Kidman, he's, like I said, over Alpha Company here in 3rd Battalion. Uh, but we just, on the coast alone, we've got four companies. That's right. You know, and each of them have their own recruiters. That's so right. Myrtle Beach, Florence, uh, Charleston, and uh, down in Beaufort. Yep. You know, all of them have their own recruiters. So, yes, while I'm talking with Sergeant Kidman, if you live out in Greenville, you're not going to be calling Sergeant Kidman. Right. You know, right. Um, when you fill out the paperwork, uh, command is going to assign a recruiter from your region to you. That's right. You know, and then that's where that contact will be made. So, yes, um, we are very uh, blessed to have uh, Sergeant Kidman here with us today. Uh, but just know that unless you live in the Myrtle Beach <laughs> area, <laughs> um, you know, or in Ore County, um, you will be end up be talking uh, talking to somebody else. Absolutely. Oh, and uh, one other t- point to touch on um, for anybody who is listening again, um, there are 23 or 27 active state guards in the United States. Um, so, if if you're listening, you're not even in South Carolina, um, and most of them are uh, coastal states. But 
um, look up your state and see if you have a state guard online. It's not hard to do. It's very simple. Um, and most of them, like, we're Army. Um, we, we wear the Army colors. Um, we follow under the National Guard. Um, there are some state guards who do not, are not Army. There's one or two that are Marine Corps. There's the Na New York Guard has Army, Navy, um, and I believe they also have Marine Corps. Um, California is just Army. Um, and all of them can be slightly different. I think one of them is even Coast Guard related. See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I just assumed we all w were f f uh, uh, fell under Army regs. No, um, there's actually quite a few state guards out oh. there. See, and I states. learned something here. <laughs> there's actually quite a few states that actually utilize not only Army but Navy. Um, Michigan actually has a naval group. See, but that makes sense. Yeah, and because they're right there on the lake. Right. Um, and New York having naval, that makes sense too. Um, but and so they're all different. Um, I believe even a couple years ago, there was one state guard. I think it was, uh, I want to say it was New New Mexico or somewhere over in the West. Um, this was a while back. But they started a state guard because every state in the United States has the um, legal right to start a what they call, quote, defense force, Absolutely. a.k.a. the state guard. Um, and I think one of the Western uh, state started one a couple years back and they did something so profound they actually decided that they were going to pay their state yes guard. yes yeah and uh, i know what state everything. you're talking about which state is it uh, it's texas is it texas yeah texas sure texas is through <laughs> the roof man they they've got um all kinds of stuff but that's a whole conversation yeah. in itself um so yeah if you're listening to this and you're in texas you should totally check them out um <laughs> and uh, but but regardless of what state you're in it is an incredible way to give back to your community uh it's an incredible opportunity if you're if you're if you are prior and you just missed the lifestyle it's that perfect opportunity to still get you know to get back in it without having to fully commit yep, yourself on your own time that's right. right it's 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 on it's it's totally up to you um but we do have to wrap up because uh, right. the event is starting to hop, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to uh, have anybody walk by that might be interested, and they see us sitting here talking. So, That's right. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, see about getting some recruits in here. And, Sergeant Kidman, it was a pleasure having you on today. Not a problem. I appreciate you having me. Yes, sir. So, everybody, uh, thank you for listening, and I will catch you in the next, in the, uh, next episode. This is Sergeant Goldsmith, out. <laughs>